A dog's eyes perform a nearly miraculous function, converting reflected light into nerve impulses that the brain uses to paint images of the world. In order to do this effectively, all the different parts of the eye must be healthy. But this is unfortunately not always the case, as there are a number of different diseases that can disrupt the way that the dog's eye normally functions. So in this video, we are going to look at the top 10 most common eye problems in dogs and how pet owners can successfully manage them. Hey guys, Dr. Peacher. Let's go. Number one, proptosis. Traumatic proptosis can occur in any breed, but brachycephalic breeds are more predisposed because of their flat faces and large prominent lobes. After a traumatic event, such as a blow to the head or a bite to the face, the globe can simply pop out and get stuck in front of the eyelids making it vulnerable to corneal ulcerations, extreme pain, and eventually blindness. The prognosis for return of vision with a proptose globe is generally poor and will depend on the amount of vision that is still left in the eye after your vet has performed a series of optical tests. Treatment options for proptosis are relatively simple. The eye is either replaced or removed, and the decision will be dependent on the amount of vision that is still present in the eye. Post-op care may include an E. coli, systemic pain medication, and oral antibiotics. Number two, cherry eye. Dogs have three eyelids, two that are readily visible, and an extra one called the third eyelid that hides from view below the inner corner of the eye. The third eyelid contains a tear-producing gland, which is usually invisible, but some dog breeds, such as the English Bulldog, have a congenital weakness of the ligaments that hold it in place, causing the gland to pop out of its normal location, almost looking like a little cherry got stuck in the inner corner of the eye. This condition can be treated fairly easily by a veterinarian, where he will perform a simple surgery to anchor the gland back into its normal position. Number 3. Corneal ulcerations. The surface of the eye is covered with a thin skin-like structure called the cornea. This surface can easily be injured through lacerations, punctures and foreign material when a dog, for example, runs through thick vegetation and gets poked in the eye. A dog with a corneal wound will often paw at the affected eye and squint because of pain. And you may also often notice redness and excessive tear production. Your vet will perform a fluorescein stain, which is basically like a dye that coats the eye in order to detect any lesions on the surface of the dog's eye. Treatment for corneal wounds involves treating infections with antibiotic eye ointments, managing pain, and simply giving the cornea enough time to heal. Surgery may be required in severe cases to repair the cornea. Number 4. Keratoconjunctivitis sicca, or aka dry eye. In case it is, the dog's own immune system decides to attack and damage the tissue responsible for forming the watery portion of the tear form thereby resulting in the tear glands producing fewer tears than normal. Tears play a vital role in nourishing corneal tissue and removing potentially dangerous material from the surface of the eye. And therefore, a lack of tears can result in major issues such as corneal ulcerations, chronic drainage of mucus and pain. Your vet will perform a Schirmer tear test which basically measures if there's a normal amount of tear production and treatment options usually include both medication that can stimulate tear production, cyclosporins, tacrolimus, and pilocarpine, and the application of an artificial tear solution. And in severe cases, surgery that redirects a duct carrying saliva so that it can moisten the eye can even be considered. Number 5. Conjunctivitis, or also known as pink eye. The conjunctiva are the mucous membranes that covers the inside of the dog's eyelids both sides of the third eyelid and even some parts of the eyeball. Now, with conjunctivitis, there usually is some degree of inflammation going on, which results in reddened and swollen conjunctiva, eye discomfort, and even eye drainage. Now, the most common causes of conjunctivitis include physical irritation due to dust and the inward growing of eyelashes, eye infections, and allergic reactions. Treatment depends on the underlying cause, and can include sterile saline eye washes that flushes away the irritants from the eye and prescription antibiotic eye drops or ointments 
that will be necessary to resolve bacterial infections. In the case of allergic conjunctivitis, your vet might prescribe eye drops containing steroids, but it is really important to understand that steroid-based eye drops can be very harmful to dogs with other similar conditions of the eye. So you should never ever start treatment with steroids without consulting your veterinarian first. Number six, glaucoma. Within the eye, the production and drainage of fluid is precisely balanced in order to maintain a constant pressure. Now, glaucoma occurs when this balance is disrupted and the pressure within the eye increases. This often results in pain, redness, a visible third eyelid, corneal opacity, and an overall enlarged eyeball. Now, this increase in pressure can easily result in blindness due to the compression of the optic nerve behind the eye. So it is really important to take your dog to the vet as soon as possible. Treatment usually include a combination of oral and topical medication in order to decrease the inflammation, absorb the fluid from the eye, promote the drainage of fluid from the eye, and to decrease the production of fluid from the eye. Number seven, cataracts. The lens sits in the middle of the eye and is usually clear, but sometimes it does happen that part or all of the lens develops a cloudy, opaque cataract. Cataracts block light from reaching the back of the eye, resulting in poor vision and even blindness, depending on the severity. Now, cataract surgery is available to dogs who have severely compromised vision, but if that is not an option, it is important to realize that there is usually no pain associated with this condition, and dogs tend to adapt well to having poor vision. Number eight, intropion. Intropion is where the eyelids roll inwards, which causes the hair to rub on the surface of the eye, causing pain, increased tear production, and a pussy discharge that can eventually cause damage to the cornea in the form of ulceration and even perforations. Intropion is usually caused by a genetic predisposition and therefore cannot really be prevented in some breeds. Treatment involves surgery where the eyelids are sutured back into a more normal position to which we refer to as eyelid tacking. Number 9. Progressive retinal atrophy. With PRA, dogs gradually become blind even though their eyes still look fairly normal, which makes this disease very difficult to diagnose. It usually starts off with night blindness and you may only notice strange behavior once most of the eyesight is almost completely gone. There's unfortunately no effective treatment for PRA, but once again, this condition is painless and dogs tend to adapt extremely well to becoming blind. And number 10, eyeworms in dogs. Eyeworms are transmitted to dogs through contact with a certain kind of flies who deposit its eggs on the eyes when they are feeding. This causes severe itching and can lead to inflammation, swelling, tearing, itchiness, eye squinting, and in severe cases, it can also lead to corneal ulcerations. The most common way to treat eye worms in dogs is to physically remove them, either with a forceps or by flushing it out with a sterile saline wash, after which a topical anesthetic has been applied to the surface of the eye. Depending on the severity of the condition, your vet may also prescribe a dewormer, topical or systemic anti-inflammatory drugs, and even antibiotics to treat and prevent secondary bacterial infections. Anytime your dog is showing increase in tearing, redness of the eyes, goopy discharge in the corners of the eye, or excessive blinking, have him evaluated by a veterinarian immediately. The eyes are extremely delicate organs, and prompt treatment is often necessary in order to avoid further future complications. Do not try to diagnose and treat the eye condition yourself. Your veterinarian has both the expertise and the equipment needed to properly examine your dog's eye in order to determine what exactly is causing the disease. If your vet does prescribe medication, make sure that you are confident in administering it to the dog's eyes and follow the instructions carefully as some medication may be detrimental to some conditions if used incorrectly. And remember, if they do go blind or the eyeballs needs to be removed, do not be alarmed as they tend to return to a normal quality of life quite quickly as they have an amazing ability to adapt to being blind using their other senses. Thank you for watching this video. If you found the content to be helpful, make sure to smash that like button and share it with your friends and your family. 
And feel free to let me know down in the comments if your dog ever suffered from one of these conditions and what you and your vet did to help him. And if you're new to my channel, consider subscribing so I'll be posting new videos on interesting pet related topics every week. As always, have a lucky day and I'll see you in another video next week. Cheers!